Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for the Media Speaks. The Correct Views, of course, is here to get through the BS that we find every day in the news and get to the untarnished truth. Um, another man arrested for threatening beheading. Joe for America uh, is the site, Mr. Joe Wurzelbacher. This is interesting. Um, anybody that followed some of the comments that I'd left, if you're not on Facebook, make sure you go to the uh, correct views on Facebook. You might not know, I was in favor of the Satanists having the right to be stupid and hold a black mass. I also said that they were stupid because... You don't bring evil, invite evil into where you are, and don't expect it to show up. And, again, I know there is a certain number of people that want to see mass death on a huge scale so that society can start over again. That is a boneheaded idea as well because we have enough decent people here. It's the very few really awful people that are leading us that we have to worry about. But anyway, it looks like the Satanists, uh, and again, uh, non-believers go ahead and scoff. It doesn't really matter. The point is we have beheadings going on in Oklahoma, and it's not just one. It's beheadings, more than one. On Friday, police arrested Oklahoma City nursing home employee Jacob Mugambi Murayithi, 30, for threatening to cut off a co-worker's head. The religion of peace has cut off a man's head, to quote Michael Savage. That was on the day after Alton Nolan was arrested in Moore, Oklahoma, for beheading a co-worker at Vaughn Foods and attempting to behead another. On Sunday, KRMGAM740 reported that a man in Tulsa was found in his garage decapitated. All of this is within a week of a bunch of Satanists holding a mass at the Oklahoma City uh, Civic Center. Secular types won't see any possible connection, but taken all together... This cluster of events is enough to make most intelligent people wonder what in the literal hell is going on in Oklahoma. Again, if it was California, you'd hardly bat an eye. Uh, but this isn't your normal Oklahoma behavior here. You've probably heard all about the beheading of Vaughn Foods by now. Nolan has been arrested, it says, on suspicion of killing a woman and trying to kill another after he was fired for starting an argument over the stoning of a woman in Islam. Again, the, the religion of peace stones a woman. Police still haven't said whether there is a connection between Nolan and the victims. Nolan's rampage was only stopped by one of the company's executives who had a gun accessible and managed to wound him. So, if you don't know about my gun views, definitely check out the last show that went up. Again, we have a gun being used for good. Uh, which happens more often than not, no matter what the media says. You know, they don't report on this, did you? You heard about the beheadings, but you didn't hear that somebody still has their head thanks to a gun. You didn't hear that, did you? Nolan, whose crime spree evidently started because of an argument over Islam, who had converted to Islam while in jail, who had a Facebook page extolling Muslim extremists and Sharia law, that is the barbaric law that you can get your hands cut off for stealing a pack of bubblegum, and whose crime is eerily reminiscent of ISIS videos showing the beheading of infidels, that's you and I, is so far being dismissed by civil government officials as a simple workplace violence. Yeah, it's not a hate crime. It's nothing to do with religion. No. In the case of Marithi, he and a co-worker, a woman, of course, were working at Bellevue Nursing Home on September 19th when he made the comments about beheading her. Marithi is from Kenya and identifies himself as plates your best. Do you think it's Buddhist? Christian? Girl Scout? It's Muslim. He allegedly told his co-worker that he represented ISIS and ISIS kills Christians. When the target of his bullying asked why ISIS does that, he reportedly replied, that is just what we do. Well, at least he was honest. He went on to describe how he is going to cut off her head with a blade, and he wanted to know when she got off work. He also allegedly said that he would cut off her head and post the picture on Facebook. Well, again, in the last show, we've gone over how Zuckerberg is more than uh, allowing 
You know, you can post a video of yourself catching a kitten on fire, but if you post uh, anything about guns, you may get your video yanked due to breaking their rules. Well, this probably would have been a welcome addition to the Facebook family, I guess. And again, I'm on it because I have to be. No word yet on whether this is going to be more of just workplace violence. It says in Tulsa, according to KRMG, the man was found decapitated in his garage near the corner of 46th and Sheridan by a woman who lives in the home but then goes on to describe him as her husband. So now you've got a woman cutting the head off of her husband. Not workplace violence here, huh? She said it was a suicide. The reporter that she said it to never asked how he committed suicide with his hands tied, his feet tied, and decapitated. How many of you can decapitate yourself with your hands and feet tied? This should have gotten the damn dumdy of the day. Is there also no indication from police why the man would cut off his own head, then tie himself up in the garage? It says the black mass that many people think brought this was conducted by a bunch of out-of-town Satanists in the basement of the Oklahoma City Civic Center. About 40 to 50 people watched the cultists denounce Jesus Christ, then spit and stomp on a communion post. The Satanist leader said the ceremony was, stone, was toned down and would not include the usual nudity, urine, and sex acts. Again, if you want to be an evil Satanist that goes uh, denouncing Jesus Christ and praising the Dark One, you're allowed to be an idiot. That's your God-given right in this country. However, I think what I'm about to read you next, even if you are said Satanist, I think most Satanists would be against this. It says, the Satanist leader has said that the ceremony, uh, excuse me, outside police arrested a Christian woman for kneeling and praying in front of the Civic Center entrances. City officials refused to stop the Satanic ritual because the building is public property. Evidently, that entitles anyone except Christians to use it. It's fact. And again, I, I think, I, I know a lot of Satanists. I don't think that they would be in favor of this actual says the Black Max seems connected to an ongoing fight over a plan to put a satanic statue in the state capitol. It seems that the framed separation of church and state gets Christians thrown out of schools, parks, and other public places, but doesn't apply if you are tight with the Dark Lord. It appeals, ap appears hell's a-popping out all over Oklahoma, he writes. And it's true. And he kind of, and again, I'm not, I like a lot of music that is satanic. But the point is, there comes a time when you need to figure out what you are as a person. What is it that you actually believe, even if you're not that good at putting it into practice? Maybe your willpower sucks. That would be me. But what do you actually stand for? And I don't think people spend a lot of time asking themselves that because it's already sold to them as if they already know. The media does it every day. Friends, zero hedge as we move on. Russia discovers massive Arctic oil, which may be larger than the Gulf of Mexico. We well, see... Everyone is saying, and the tone of this article is America is going to regret its sanctions on Russia. I'm not in favor of the sanctions on Russia because I think the Ukraine needs to suffer whatever penalty it gets. I've said it a hundred times. If you do not have the conies to either be, to be Ukrainian, not Russian, not part of the European Union, Ukrainian. If you cannot vote for that, then I don't really care what happens to you. Let the EU and Russia destroy you anywhere you want. You should have stood up and been your own damn country. Ditto for Scotland. Well, Russia has denounced the West. They say they don't need us. Well, they're going, their financial woes are crashing. Their economy is crashing. And again, I don't like Obama and I don't like Putin. I think they are two sides of the same coin. Putin is very much a New World Order uh, um, follower. They, they want to cut the planet up, uh, the UN wants to cut the planet up into certain sections. And of course, Russia wants their section. And Putin's just as greedy and selfish as Obama. Don't fool yourself for a minute. Communism is still a terrible idea. Well, pray tell, how are they going to get the oil out of here? It's in the Arctic. It's going to cost a fortune to get it out. With the economy crashing both here and in Russia, they're going to have to do it together or they're not going to get to get, be able to get the oil out of here. And the article doesn't spend enough time saying that, but I want to throw it out there right away. Mark my words, here's my prediction, it's going to be the U.S. and Russia pulling it out of the ground at the same time, or it's going to sit there under the ice until such becomes possible. 
In a dramatic stroke of luck for the Kremlin this morning, there is hardly a person in the world who is happier than President Vladimir Putin, because overnight state-run OAO Rosenneft announced it has discovered what may be a treasure trove of black oil, one which could boost Russia's coffers by hundreds of billions of dollars, if not more, when a vast pool of crude was discovered in the Kara Sea region of the Arctic Ocean. That is to say, under um, amazing hardships to get to. Showing that the region, it says, has the potential to become one of the world's most important crude producing areas, arguably bigger than the Gulf of Mexico. The announcement was made by Igor Sechin, Rosenef's chief executive officer, officer who spent days sailing the Russian research ship. And, uh, it's got pictures of it here on the site. For those of you that missed my graphics, I need another computer to bring them back. But it's huge. It is a massive find. But it mentions in here that Exxon is about to be hit with sanctions if they don't leave. And Exxon helped make the discovery. That's an American company for you Russia fans. Um... Rosenft and Exxon won't be able to do more drilling, putting exploration and development of the area on hold despite the announcement. So again, Exxon is not going to be able to do this with Russians. And mark my words, Russia is not going to be able to get this out of the ground without American help. It's simply going to be too expensive. They don't have the money for it. You can talk about China all you want to, but China has its own problems also rooted in communism. It says it means that instead of generating billions in E&P revenue, XOM could end up with, well, nothing. And that would be quite a shock to the U.S. company because the unveiled Arctic field may hold about 1 billion barrels of oil. And similar geology means that the nearby surrounding area may hold more than the U.S. port of the Gulf of Mexico. For a sense of how big the spoils go, to another piece by Bloomberg points out, which tells us that Universitatea, Univers I'm so good with foreign languages, Universitatea, the geological structure being drilled, is about the size of the city of Moscow, and large enough to contain more than 9 billion barrels, a trove worth more than $900 billion in today's prices. It says the only way to reach it is on a four-day voyage from Murmansk. It's the largest city north of the Arctic Circle. Everything has to be shipped in, and they're going to need a flotilla to keep drifting ice from the rig. It says the bonanza may be non-recourse to Exxon, and after Obama made it quite clear that all Mester and companies will have to wind down operations in Russia. What's not being mentioned here hardly at all is that it's going to cost a fortune. A little bit of it is mentioned here. But there is no way that Russia, and very likely, even if we had permission to, America could yank this out of the ground without the help of the other one. That is simply a correct view. Uh, friends, I mean, this is real quick, but I liked it. It was good, good news here. Occupy Group abolishes nearly $4 million in student loan debt. I'm happy about this because even though I've had my issues with Occupy, you can go back to the reports I did at the time that they were big. This, this is capitalism actually working here, whether they like it or not. They themselves are paying off student loans for people. And I, as somebody that was likely going to be saddled with this debt till the day that I die, um, this, is, this is really good news. RT.com. On the third anniversary of the Occupy Wall Street movement, an offshoot group announced that it had erased $3.8 million worth of private student loan debt. The group Strike Debt said in press release issued on Wednesday this week that its Rolling Jubilee initiative has purchased nearly $4 million in private student debt owned by former attendees of Everson College, an institution run by a massive for-profit education company called Corinthian Colleges, in turn freeing those former students from a huge chunk of their burdensome loan bills. God bless them. Jubilant greetings, the group wrote to 2,700 former Everest students. We are writing to you with good news. We just got rid of your Everest College debt. Everest College is committing widespread fraud, the letter continues. It targets lower-income students and students of color, 
offers low quality education and with the help of the federal government buries students under a lifetime of crushing debt all for the profit of the one percent no one should be forced to mortgage their future for an education god bless um, it says, you no longer owe the balance of this particular debt. It is gone, a gift with no strings attached. Wow. You are no longer under any obligation to settle this account with the original creditor, the bill collector, or anyone else. It says, we buy debt for pennies on the dollar, but instead of collecting it, we abolish it. Strike debt, explains Rolling Jubilee on the group's website. So, if you would like to donate money to Rolling Jubilee, tell you what. The first two people that say that they're donating $5 to Rolling Jubilee, I'll match it with five of my own. We'll get them $20 towards their goal of helping people between 10 from you and 10 from me. How's that? Uh, the New American Iceland's volcanic pollution dwarfs all of Europe's human emissions. Ban volcanoes. That's what it is. We should ban volcanoes and any company except for the any country except for the United States that is found to be harboring a volcano will in fact face sanctions. This should be done for the UN to combat global warming. So the sulfur dioxide emitted from the Halahuran eruption that has reached up to six hundred six excuse me, sixty thousand tons per day. An average close to 20,000 tons since it began, notes Paul Stephenson of September 25th report for Iceland Review Online. For comparison, all the SO2 pollution in Europe from industries, energy production, traffic, and house heating amounts for 14,000 tons per day. So clearly, we have an issue with volcanoes. So we need to ban volcanoes, right? That, that'll be the next solution. The, the bad news here is that it's predicted that it's going to create a much colder winter. But man, is warming the planet. The planet can't fix itself. Well, I think the planet's done a pretty damn good job of fixing itself over there right now. It says it could, uh, tiny pieces of debris act as billions of shields reflecting the sunlight away from the Earth, meaning winter temperatures could plunge lower than ever before, while summer will be devoid of sunshine. So uh, there you go. Um, ban volcanoes here at the correct views. Friends, I've got three more stories I'm going to get to, so don't go anywhere. I just want to mention that if you're going to Cedar Point, if you're going up to the Lake Erie Fear Fest, um, it, that's awesome too. It's at the uh, Haunted Manor. One of the best haunted houses. It's not Cedar Point, it's outside of it. It's one of the best haunted houses that I've ever been to. Well, I can tell you a true story from having gone there and Cedar Point. Christelle and I were using the bathroom at a certain motel because on this particular trip we were sleeping in the um, van that I have we weren't staying at a motel and wouldn't you know while we were uh, using the restroom cleaning up we heard people talking about spending $150 for a room the room had two beds they didn't need two beds but they were being charged $150 for it that's the cheapest room they had go to the Seacrest Motel and tell Vicky that you heard about it from TCV. You will not believe the amount of money that you will save. You'll be able to buy a whole nother day at Cedar Point and probably feed yourself with the money that you save. Seacrest Motel in Sandusky. You heard about it from TCV. Friends, a few more stories to get to. Uh, vaccine fraud. What about psychiatric fraud? Staggering. Uh, John Rappaport, Prison Planet, wrote this. This is good. Do you know that manic depression, obsessive compulsive, all of that are behavioral traits that are real, but they are not mental illness? Do you know that there is no such thing as a chemical imbalance for 99.99% of the people in the world? And if there was, we wouldn't have a way to test for it anyway. Do you know there's not one test extant today in American psychi psychiatry? And my dad was a psychiatric LPN, so don't tell me otherwise. Do you know there's no test for it at all? It's just you have a certain number of systems, that's what you are. It says, uh, this is an article about the intentional construction of a false reality. Um, and this is true. If psychiatrists are experts on the human mind, mice can navigate, navigate the Arctic in canoes. Psychiatrists are educated and able to talk a good game. 
and politicians are more than happy to mouth vagaries and consign the problems society to mental health professionals. But there is no definitive laboratory test for any so-called mental disorder. All so-called mental disorders are concocted, named, labeled, described, and categorized by a committee of psychiatrists from menus of human behaviors. Their findings are published in periodically updated editions of the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual of Mental Disorders, and trust me, I've looked it up, it's a crockery, printed by the American Psychiatric Association. I used to date a uh, person, actually I have more than date, I was... I would dated a couple social workers, and I was uh, very, very close to a certain person who was in psychiatry as a major. And they brought home the biggest mound of BS you've ever seen every single day. It says pharmaceutical companies who manufacture highly toxic drugs to treat every one of these disorders are leading a charge to invent more and more mental health categories so they can sell more drugs to make more money. Um, this has been proven by Dr. Alan Francis, who, those of you who say I don't give uh, sources. And he made a very interesting statement by, by Gary Greenberg, author of a Wired article, Inside the Battle to Define Mental Illness. It says, there is no indication of a mental disorder. It's BS. I mean, you cannot define it. It's fake, people. It says, uh, Francis might have been referring to the fact that his baby, the DSM-4, had rearranged earlier definitions of ADHD and bipolar to permit more diagnosis, leading to the vast acceleration of the drug dosing with highly powerful toxic compounds. Once again, it's not real. And what do these drugs do? They are acute, life-threatening, and even fatal liver toxicity. And again, my, my, my mom just died. There is a time and place for things. I may have gotten four or five Xanax from a friend, took them during that week, maybe. And guess what? Done. There's a time and place to move yourself away from a certain amount of grief if you wish to do so. Relax. Go through the funeral arrangements. Do whatever you need to do. And then it's time to, to get rid of them. The happy pills need to go. It's time to grow up and be your own person. And it can, brain damage um, is very common from these things. We find that almost all the shooters that we find are uh, painfully on these things. And there is no test to even prove that they are real because they are not real. They are fantasies of the drug industry. Um, Dr. Peter Bregan describes in his book this very same thing, that there is no evidence for any of this. It's simply an excuse to sell you drugs. Guys, this might be the worst idea I've ever heard in the history of awful ideas as we get near the end of the show. Two to go. Don't go anywhere. I got the dumb of the day after this. Walmart prepares to offer low-cost checking accounts. This is like... Uh, North Korea offering a uh, feed the feed the people day. They don't have any food. You're gonna bring Walmart with no morals into the checking industry. This is terrible. Just bring a bull into a China shop. It says here comes Wall Bank. Notice my shirt. Yeah. After years of thwarted efforts to break into banking, Walmart is making its biggest foray yet into everyday financial services. My God, give me a rope. I'll hang myself. Walmart, the nation's largest retailer and responsible for untold numbers of people on uh, the government dole because they don't pay enough to their employees to feed them themselves, so everybody else has to pick up the slack for them, is teaming up with Green Dot, known for its prepaid payment cards, to supply checking accounts to almost anyone over 18 who passes an ID check. Daniel Eckert, senior vice president of Walmart, said on Tuesday that he that the accounts would be available nationwide by the end of October. The accounts are intended to be low-cost alternatives to traditional banking accounts with no fees or overdrafts or bounce checks and no minimum account balance. In comparison, a basic checking account at Citibank charges $12 if a check is returned for 34 overdrafts. Now get this, why are they being so nice to you? The new accounts from Green Dot called GoBank will cost $8.95 a month as they direct deposits less than $500 a month. This is 
BS. It's just another way for them to go after your money and steal $8.95 from you a month. People that don't have any money are going to be opening this stupid thing up. How do you get around it? Real easy. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up how to live without banks. I tell you exactly how to spend every day of your life living without a bank. And if you need it to cash a check, I tell you how to do it and not use it for anything other than that. You can get that article free. Just go, go, go. It's on the site. Go look it up. Friends, that brings us to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. School labels, chapstick, over-the-counter drug, demand students, bring a doctor's note. Mikhail Thalen, prison planet, always finds the ultimate dum dees He really does. An elementary school student in Virginia is working to reverse a school board policy that has banned students from using lip balm. A student, 11-year-old Grace Carafa, says he was denied chapstick shortly before her lips began bleeding during the school week. I was told that I couldn't use it, Kafka said to the News Virginian. Then later in the day, the lips started to bleed, so I asked for chapstick again and was told that it was against school policy for elementary school kids to have chapstick. So what do you do, friends? How do you fight back from this kind of thing? Why don't you call that school board, uh, Richmond, Virginia, and let them know that you're against this kind of thing? It's the only way you can get around it. It's the only way you can fight back. It's the Augusta County Schools in Virginia. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie, who might you know, use contraband lipstick, reported for the Mediaspeaks.com. Go there, look up the work of Kyra Court, D. Lake, and myself, and check out the Arcadia Grill. Guys, carefully walk in the front door and let them know you're in the mood for absolutely delicious food. You heard about it on The Correct Views, and you are ready. I say carefully because Christelle was going to a restaurant, tripped over her own feet, and may have to have knee surgery. Dummy! Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Good night. God bless.